In this video, we're going to be going over Wizards for Zoho CRM. Wizards, of course, are essentially a way to streamline and standardize the way that we create records in CRM. So before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. So that really does help us out. And if you find, hey, you know, maybe you need a little bit of help setting up your Zoho account, just head on over to zanata.com, click on book a meeting, and we'll be talking in no time. So without any further ado, let's jump right on into the walkthrough. As we look at CRM, let's say we were to open up a lead here in the create page. This would be like our normal way of creating a lead. Essentially, every single field is going to pop up one by one, and I can run down this list and enter them all in. Now, what you may see is that uh, one, there's a lot of fields on the page. Two, you've got required info that's kind of spread throughout the record. So it'd be really easy for me to like type in example lead. And then let's say I put in their email address and maybe I don't notice that these fields down here are required. So I try to save it and then it's just kind of annoying, right? So if you didn't notice these, you'll have to fill them in after. We'll also notice here that I do have data split up into different sections that might be used to organize the data in the long term but maybe they're not always the most intuitive for creating a record, right? Like secondary email, for example, you're not always going to have when you're creating a record. But based on my layout, this is actually going to show up above something like street and city, which is required, right? So you might find that some of the, the layout decisions that you make for the long term storage of the data aren't always the best for the entry of the data, just again, based on what you normally have on hand as part of that process. So that is where a wizard is going to come in. Wizards, of course, under our settings, they're under the customization options here. And this kind of gives us a nice little breakdown of what this does. So really what we're going to use a wizard is to break down a form into multiple screens. You can have kind of a flow that you have as they're moving through those various screens. Um, you can also set up some different buttons and things like that to take actions as part of a wizard. So let's create a wizard here. One thing that is really important to keep in mind is wizards are really just for the creation of a particular record. So once it's been created, the wizard is not super applicable anymore. Um, it's really primarily used for that initial creation. I'm going to go ahead and give it a name, lead creation. Uh, you choose your module, and then within that, you'll choose the layout within that module. So Always important to know, like with many pieces of functionality, wizards are specific to a layout. So in my case, I just have the one. If you have multiple, make sure to include multiple different wizards, uh, depending on the layout that somebody has selected. There's two options on how we go about creating a wizard. First will be a blank wizard. So this is starting from scratch. I'm going to set up pages. I'm going to set up fields on those pages. The other one is kind of an auto-generated wizard where it's going to create it just based on the fields and the sections that we already have in the record. So that can be nice in a case where those line up with how you would want the data entered. I am going to show it from the perspective of a blank record just for our use case here. So I'll click next. Now we are on the wizard creation screen. So if I double click, it will add a page. Now, each one of these pages is essentially going to be one block that's going to be filled in by that particular user when they're creating a record. So maybe I'll have a page for the leads personal information. It's going to add something like last name because that's required for every single lead. But over here on the left, we will see the rest of the fields are available uh, that we need for, you know, creating this record. Now, in my case, I'm just going to click and drag a couple of those fields here onto my page where these will now be available when we are creating the record. Um, you can also include whether or not you'd like the image to be available. If they have it on file, they can go ahead and drag and drop it in. Otherwise, you know, any of these other fields that we want to have can come directly into our wizard creation page. Um, I'm going to add basically this core info for the personal information as step one. Now down here below, we do have the option of adding different buttons. So buttons are going to do one of two things. Um, we're going to either have a default button, which is basically going to move us from one page to the next, or we're going to have a custom button, which would essentially trigger a custom function, right? So a script or some type of other automated process. We're not going to focus too much on the custom buttons for right now. 
there is a lot of utility there. Like a big one would be like opening a new tab, right? So if you wanted to open in a route IQ or some type of dashboard or something else as a part of a wizard, you can do that from here. I'll tell you, we don't find too much of a need for adding custom functions to wizards. Normally a custom function, like it would make sense to trigger it when the lead is created. Once you know that you have all of that information, there are some times that you want to do it to like calculate a value or a total as a part of this flow. So I won't say that they're never useful, but we normally find ourselves using the standard buttons where we're really just going to be moving from one page to the next. So I'm going to give this a name called continue. We'll use this button to save the record. Always a good habit to have. If you want to do this show summary, what this is going to do is essentially do a little pop-up that will show you all of the data that's been entered so far. So I'll go ahead and turn that on just so that you can see it. Down here below, we can choose which type of profiles should be able to use this button, um, whether this button should be always showing, hidden unless there's certain criteria, or disabled altogether and enabled based on criteria. Really, we're gonna just do this as always show. That's kind of what makes sense here for our case. We can also choose different uh, visual components, so curved, particular colors, things like that. And then you can set up email notifications, webhooks, and custom functions that are gonna trigger based on each of these steps being completed. Again, most of the time for a wizard, we're not really gonna do many of these actions because we'll trigger them when the lead is fully created or when the record is created rather than in the middle of the process. But again, you'll need to make the determination based on your process, how you want that to work. Now, one other thing I do wanna show here is with these custom buttons, and we're gonna need to link them to another screen, right? So if we go ahead and click done, now we'll be back to our builder. Here, if I do need to make any changes, I can just double click, right? And this will come right back in. Otherwise, I can double click outside of this tab and that will open a new window. So let's give this a title. We'll call this our address information page. And here, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag in all of our relevant address fields, and we'll be right back. All right, so here we are with our address information added. You'll notice a couple of these fields are required. So even though a field is required, it doesn't need to show up on our first page. As long as it gets onto a page eventually, then we are good to go. I'm going to click done here. We'll come back to that and add a button. And so with our page for capturing address information completed, let's go ahead and check how to actually connect one of these pages to another. So there are two different ways. One, I can come in and click and drag directly from this continue button over to the page that I want it to route to. One important thing here is if we come into this page to link a button to another, we do have to disable saving the record. Saving the record basically is that final step. Everything's gonna be written. Um, you can't really save it until all those mandatory fields are completed. Um, so by turning that off, we're able to link it to another page. Here, if that link isn't there, if I don't do the click and drag, we'll have a little button where we can add it uh, through that UI. So if I were to delete our path and open back up, go into continue. There we go. Our link to screen button will show here. And then I can click and drag it over to wherever I want it to route. As you would expect, really creating the wizard is just a sequence of steps where we are going to make determinations about what data is necessary at each point. Um, once we feel good about our wizard and we've captured everything that we need, um, you'll go ahead and make that last button for complete or whatever you want to call it um, that will actually have us save the record. So here I'm going to save it and I'm going to show the summary. I'm going to open this up for all of our roles. And now we have essentially everything we need. So before we call that wizard done, let's jump back over here and just see if there is any other info that we may want to grab about this particular process. So one last thing that we can do in our wizards that I do want to show you is actually do some conditional logic. So let's say that this is an engagement that's something new where we might not already know some of the information about the account. Well, how would we go about making that choice and offering the ability to enter that data as part of our wizard flow. So 
let's say that on our first page, we actually ask them for this engagement type. So this engagement type, again, just as a reminder, basically has options for new or existing business. Now, let's say down below, we're going to open up our address info. We're going to call this continue, and we're going to un, um, unidentify it as the last step. Now let's have this last page for company information. And here, I'm going to add company name, annual revenue, industry, and let's say annual SaaS spending. Now, in this case, I'm going to add a button. This will be our last one. So we'll say this complete. And this will be our button to save the record. We'll show that summary. Now, let's draw our path from our previous step to this. So we've got our three-step wizard here. Now, as I mentioned, let's say this is an existing client. We may already know the annual revenue, the industry, and the annual SaaS spending. So we can actually create a conditional rule here that will show or require fields based on previous entries in the wizard. So let's say if our engagement type is new build, then we'll show these three fields. Where if it's an existing client, we already know the company, then we won't, we won't need to do that. So here, now I have that ability where, again, based on that previous entry, these fields are going to show and hide themselves appropriately. So let's click done and let's save our wizard here. And then last but not least, let's actually take it through the process. So let's come to our leads module and click create. Now here we can set this as the default, but I'm gonna to toggle over to our lead creation wizard. And now we'll see things have simplified quite a lot, right? So I can come in, I type in my data, Uh, you might notice here, it would probably be a good idea to have the engagement type be mandatory at this point. We're not going to worry about that for now, just as our demo account. But nine times out of 10, you are going to want that to be a mandatory step. You can save a, a wizard as a draft, but in our case, we're going to continue to that next step. We'll enter in our address. And then again, because our engagement type is new build, these fields are showing up. Now, if I were to go and toggle this over to renovation, now it'll just show that company record. Or in your case, let's say it was like a existing client, maybe you change this to a lookup field that shows up instead of the company name as a text field. In our case, we're gonna say this is new and we can complete our record. So again, because I have that summary here, it has this uh, summary page enabled such that each of the sections will be summarized for me upon completion of the wizard. And I can click save and kind of give it that final stamp of approval. Now the record has been created. The wizard will never trigger again for this record. You are good to go. Everything will just really be from the primary page now. Um, hypothetically, you can come into the edit and force it back into the wizard but realistically, from here on out, most people are just going to be using this page to do most of their work for this particular record. So I really do hope that this video is useful for you. If it was, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Let us know that we're making useful content for you. If it sparks any questions, video requests, or feedback, leave those in the comment section down below that like button as we do try to read and respond to as many of those as we can get to every single week. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.